I am Jim Comics of Midgard, and I have been burdened with a glorious purpose. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Jim Comics. Today we're discussing and reviewing and ranking all episodes of Season 1 of Loki. And honestly, this show is spectacular, especially compared to the other Marvel shows. <clears throat> glorious purpose. The Disney Plus Marvel shows had quite middling, have been quite middling. One division sort of split its fan base with some people, the lower intellectuals. Okay, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Saying it was amazing, while some people, myself included, believing it to be just okay, especially after that finale. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was overall a pretty mediocre show that I fairly enjoyed, only meant to set up Captain America 4. However, Loki was different. Unlike the previous two shows, it legitimately had large consequences, true intrigue, and affected the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe in a huge way. While this is definitely the best MCU show, no offense to the other two, there are de definitively some episodes of poor writing and bad pacing. Instead of reviewing the show as a whole, I've decided to mainly review and rank each of the six episodes based on their pacing, characterization, characterizations, and just general writing quality. So let's get right into it. Before we start, there's obviously a massive spoiler warning for the entire first season of Loki. Who could it get? And I guess the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies that feature Loki as well. If you haven't finished the show, then go watch it and come back. Also, remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below your opinions on Loki and your predictions for season 2. Like, kneel before me. Okay. <clears throat> In the bottom of our list, to no one's surprise if you've seen the show, is Lamentis, episode 3. In this episode, Loki and the Variant are stuck on the planet Lamentis and, while trying to escape, develop a romantic bond. At the end of the episode, they miss their opportunity to escape. That's the entire summary. This was easily the worst episode of the entire show, and possibly all of the Disney Plus MCU shows. And it probably contributes to many viewers tuning out of the show. At about the midway point of the season, the show slows to a crawl, and the plot could have been basically the same about this episode. The only real development here is a romance between Loki and Sylvie, the Enchantress, Lady Loki, whatever you want to call it. Even then, they probably could have reworked their romantic development into the previous and next episodes and saved everyone a week of boredom. Honestly, it wouldn't have been too bad if the show wasn't in a weekly format and aired like a Netflix show, so viewers could at least just binge through this episode without having to wait another week for the next one. Overall, I was pretty burnt up by this episode, which is such a waste of a slot for one of the weeks. Honestly, bad, just bad writing. Okay. Number 5 we have The Variant, Episode 2. In this episode, Loki and Mobius begin their hunt for the evil Loki Variant. After a failed attempt, Loki deduces that the Variant may be hiding in disaster events to avoid the TVA. References Ragnarok, pretty cool. His theory proves correct, and a TVA corner the Variant in a futuristic supermarket during a hurricane, where she explodes a time bomb and we find out that she is a woman. Surprise! Overall, this episode is pretty mediocre, but it's not bad like the last one. Unlike episode 3, this episode is actually necessary to the plot and gives us some development between Loki and Agent Mobius. The only real problem here is that this episode is slow paced, and the supermarket setting at the end, like Rock's Cart or whatever, kind of took me out of it. Like, why would supermarkets in 2050 be the same as those in 2021? Is it a retro supermarket? And why would they sell the same items? It's not a big deal, but it really bugged me, like, honestly. No matter how boring this episode may have been, especially compared to the pilot before it, it redeems itself for playing Holding Out for a Hero in its opening scene. That song is fire, so... Good job, Loki. It should have been an game, that song. At number 4, we have Journey into Mystery, episode 5. And this one is, is actually leaps and bounds ahead of the last one, okay? After the last episode, Loki is stuck in the void where he meets more Loki variants. Meanwhile, Sylvie tries to interrogate Renslayer, who then calls backup, so Sylvie goes to the Void and meets up with Mobius, and later Loki and his variant squad. They all plan to take down the Time Eater Eliath to find out who's behind the TVA. By the end of the episode, Sylvie enchants it and she and Loki go to find answers at the end of time. This episode is leaps and bounds ahead of the previously mentioned two, like I said. It's extremely action heavy, which only adds to its entertainment factor. The Void is an interesting concept executed really well and it's fun to see so many references to the comics and different Loki variants for us geeks. Among the best easter eggs are Frog, Frog, Frog 4, 
Frog Thor, man, that pronunciation. A giant yellow jacket helmet, which I really want to hear the story behind. And of course, the Thanos copter. Classic Loki and Kid Loki are also great references for us geeks. And Alligator Loki is such a chad. Like, honestly, that dude needs his own TV show. Also, Loki Sylvie romance gets really good in this episode. Say it's probably one of the best episodes for the romance. Like, you know what I'm just saying? Like, the romance is developed the best in this episode. Kicking off our top three, we have Glorious Purpose. Episode 1. As the pilot, this episode sets up the rest of the show. And it does it amazingly. Loki gets taken to the TVA for stealing the Tesseract. Of course he did. In Endgame. He meets Agent Mobius, and he is tasked with helping him find and prune the variant an evil variant or version of Loki. This episode is literally the perfect plot in mean, pilot because it creates intrigue, although most of the interesting aspects of the show cannot be revealed or even teased yet. It establishes the time variance authority and the branching timelines concept that was teased by the Ancient One in Avengers Endgame. Loki sitting down in the time theater and viewing his life play out before him is heartbreaking and actually evokes emotion in the audience, something I feel like WandaVision and Falcon in many areas were lacking. While well, WandaVision had some drama and some sad moments, Falcon, I didn't feel that many emotions. <clears throat> Tom Hiddleston does a great job of expressing emotion when Loki is presented with his relationship with Thor, Thor, Frigga's death, and Thanos' snapping of Loki's neck. Fortunately, this was the Marvel pilot of the most viewers, with about 700 million, nearly doubling those of WandaVision and Falcon in the Winter Soldier, and it totally deserved it. Our runner-up is... For all time, always. Episode 6. Oh my gosh, I love this. In the final episode, Loki and Sylvie confront the TVA's creator, He Who Remains, while Mobius confronts Renzo. He Who Remains explains the creation of the universe and the multiversal war, claiming that if they kill him, then his variants would all be unleashed, Kang the Conqueror, as well as more timelines. Sylvie tries to kill him, but Loki intervenes, and they end up kissing before Sylvie sends him to the TVA. She then kills He Who Remains presumably leading to catastrophic consequences, which Loki finds out. This episode had a lot riding on it, and personally, I believe it totally delivered. It excitingly set up Loki Season 2, Spider-Man No Way Home, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then I think about it, it also inspired What If. The portrayal of He Who Remains was quite weird and honestly pretty silly. But since his variant is dead, the version that will be dubbed Kang the Conqueror has the potential to be characterized in a more serious way. The romance between Sylvie and Loki came to a climax with them kissing, and Sylvie's betrayal was quite ironic, considering that she has trust issues and expected Loki to betray her. Overall, this episode entertainingly closed off this chapter, while leaving numerous, and I mean numerous, doors open for the MCU's future as well as the future of this show. Coming in at number one, without a doubt in my mind, was the Nexus event. Episode 4. In this episode, the show was firing on all cylinders. Loki and Sylvie got arrested from Lamentis during a romantic moment. Loki gets put in a time loop by Mobius, nice Lady Sif reference, while Sylvie shows B-15 that she was a variant and that all of the TVA staff are variants. Mobius learns of the truth and he tries to help Loki escape before Renslayer prunes, seemingly killing him. She then takes Loki and Sylvie to the Timekeepers, but B-15 helps them defeat Renslayer and the Keepers. Sylvie beheads one, only to find out that they are all fake. Loki then gets pruned by Renslayer, and this episode's after credit scene shows Loki meet more variants of himself in the world. Wow. Just wow. This episode was jam-packed with twists, turns, and betrayals. Everything the audience thought they knew is turned on its head, and we find out that there is more to the time variance authority that appears. Mobius and Renslayer's relationship feels genuine, at least more than before, in this episode. It just adds more depth to Mopius' supposed death at Renslayer's hands. Loki and Sylvie's budding romance continues to develop throughout. Also, Hunter B-15 gets a redemption hook and warms up to the Lokis, and let's be honest, the audience started lighter right now. Add all these amazing aspects together and you get the best episode of Loki Season 1, and possibly the best episode of all the MCU shows to date. Thank you for watching to this point. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment your opinion on Loki down below. And maybe I'll start doing this every time a new Marvel show comes out on Disney+, Plus, like Loki Season 2.